So welcome to another war game review from the playersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we are High Kickstarter doing a preview of a game, which let me get it in the shot. Yeah. <laughs> so this is alright, let me get it right. For what remains. And this is designed by David Thompson, and it's put out by DVG or Dan Burson Games. If you're on the Kickstarter page, you know that. You know that, yeah. So this is a two-player tactical skirmish game that also has uh, campaigns in it that you can link together, mm -hmm. but also has uh, a solitaire kind of AI that you play yeah. against as well. So it's quite a versatile little game. Um, but I think, I want to say primarily, you can probably play this two players. If you've yes. got two players. Um, That's what it would be the best at, I think, yes. is two player. Because your opponent's going to have more realistic actions and more strategy than just rolling a die and choosing a couple of yeah, decent like, actions. Yeah. So <clears throat> this we we played it two player. Haven't played the solo, so I'm not no. going to comment on that particularly. Uh, but what we can expect from this, it's a post-apocalyptic skirmish game. Um, so the the game has six factions with it. Um, we played with a couple with the promo set that we had. Yes. There's like a I don't know what the names are. Yours are they're like the human Free, the Freeman Co Coalition. And mine are the were the robots, the mechanical Oh what was that name? It was the The Combine. Com the Combine, which yeah. I like. Yeah, uh, that is pretty cool. So this was kind of a mechs versus humans mm -hmm. kind of a, a scenarios that we played through. Mm -hmm. Um movement is through squares or on a grid. Um, the board is a bunch of double-sided tiles mm -hmm. that you lay out based on a scenario and the victory conditions are either set by the scenario or it's X amount of victory points, which is killing enemy units, right. picking up um, kind of scavenging, scavenger tokens, things like that. But mm -hmm. it's a very, very simple game to learn. Yep. Um, and it's one of those games that learn the rules quickly and then the depth comes from your team building and your, yes. your actual tactical um yeah. Little play out that you that you have in, so yeah. it plays very quickly as well. I felt very quickly. We played in. An, I think it's advertised as thirty to forty five minutes. I would agree with that. That first game took us about thirty, and and you can. I think once you get the rules, I think you're going to be able to do most of them in twenty five to thirty. Yeah, would be my guess. And, and maybe as your squads get bigger, harder to kill. Um, you've got more hit points to get through. Your weapons yeah. get better, but. Yeah. You, it might be, you know, you could probably get a game that's 45 minutes yep. if, if you had a bunch of the elite units. Well, maybe. it's also depending on what the objectives are. Yeah. The, the scenario, the base scenario, it's really just kill your enemies, five five people. So it's that's how you score the victory points and get the objective to win. But all that said, very quick playing. Yes. A turn goes along at a good clip, and the turn taking is really cool because mm -hmm. it is a it's a chip pull system. Yeah, which is I think very well done. Yeah, and if you've not played any kind of war games, um, chip pull is something that we really like. Yeah, it makes for good solo play as well because you get some randomness. Mm -hmm. um, so you just kind of pull from a chip. Hey, this is the guy that can move. You pull from a chip. Hey, this is the next guy that can yep. move or attack. Right. So one side could theoretically move all of their units. Before the other side gets to move any, depending yes. on what chits are pulled. That's not very normal. rare. Yeah. Very but, rare to happen, but... But you have to plan or mm -hmm. have that flexibility built into your plan accordingly. Right? Yes. This isn't a game where it's I go, you go, and I can say, I will move this guy this many spaces, yep. and I can out-activate you over here, so I'm not going to do anything there yet, things like that. You, you know, that mm -hmm. luck of the draw helps to kind of keep you in games or make yep. you make a decision on the fly, which I think is a really interesting, it's a fun way to do a but, tactical game. But you mentioned it, it, it is more than just luck of the draw though. This is a building of your chit cup. Yes. You're choosing from amongst your available units, the chits that you want to put in that cup. I think you put as many uh, you, cups in the chit, uh, or chits in the cup, as you have units on the map. Yes. So if you want this turn, if your, say your Grenadier is in range of firing and maybe killing multiple enemy units, you might try to overload that cup so that he can go multiple times. Yes. And, and that's something I really liked because I thought we did a very good job between the two of us trying to decide 
the way the battle would go. And you also have to plan. You have to think, okay, it's going to take a round to move. So you want to you want to plan that into your actions. You want to kind of wait for the enemy to come in. But I really liked that concept of building that cup. Yes. Very cool. So each of your kind of uh, characters or units has a little ID card, so to speak. Yeah. And for mm-hmm. each unit that you've purchased in your squad building beforehand, you get three tokens for them. Mm-hmm. And so you're choosing from this pool of tokens secretly to seed this kind of chit draw cup. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you might put all three of your chits of one guy in there because you really want to, like, move, move, attack, or yep. do a bunch of attacks. Or, or get out of the way. run across the board. But half your units aren't going to do anything that turn because you only can put certain number in there. And then that unit that you put three times in that cup, you're not going to get those chits back for an entire another round. Yeah. They kind of go into an exhausted area. And then you have to do another round before those will then become available. So that's a really cool tactical concept that was put into this game. That yes. I really, you really have to plan that out, and I like that a lot. And I think that's one of the things I really enjoyed about this game because the the, the like the actual tactical rules are very very simple. Move X amount of spaces. Certain terrains X make it dice. certain terrain make it more difficult to move or give you an advantage because you're elevated, yeah. etc. Very simple, very clear to understand. Line of sight's fairly fairly simple as well. Range is simple. But how all that plays out, I'm not concentrating on that as much as I am like my my little preparation and how, yeah. who I'm gonna activate and how I'm gonna yeah. try and manipulate that. That's where my real super thinky stuff goes mm-hmm. in. Because when I when I pull my chip I've got one guy to activate. What is he going to do? Well, your choices are, you know, move towards an objective. It, it's yep. the gameplay is easy, so yep. I'm not like worried about that. Well, I don't think you're bogged down in the rules. I think yeah, the, the so design, clean. the design of it, really allows you to get into the tactical side of it, understand and try to control the battlefield and get into position to do what your people do best. For example, the other thing that we haven't talked about yet is each of the different types of units have differing special abilities. Those special abilities also grow as that character advances. They start as a recruit, they go to a veteran level, and then to an elite. So you have to know not only what your units on the board can do, but also what your abilities are. Yes. Because I've got to be worried about, oh, that flamethrower hellfire, when that the, the, inferno. Had, the inferno, man, if he got within around five squares, he was going to kill all my guys in that area. That that was a huge weapon. So I had to kind of play cat and mouse with him and think about how to defeat him before he could get into range and kill me. So I liked that concept, understanding, once again, your abilities, how they, they differ, they also grow, and then how best to use those. I loved the commanders in the human faction. They were able to allow other units to move. As they grow up, other units can fire. So you can get two or three firing attempts in one round. I really liked that. I thought that was well done as well. But that's not that's one thing that I enjoy about tactical games is seeing what it gives me with regards to, you know, special abilities mm-hmm. and different units and combining arms, how those all work together. And and center, symbiosis and synergy between different units. Yes, and across your faction. Yep. So I, I really like and that's where some of the theme comes in mm-hmm. from my little kind of uh, <clears throat> mech faction. Well, I've got a repair droid who goes around repairing. Yep. They've got like surveillance with their little camera eyes. Mm-hmm. My commander, you know, has got a sensor and gives you extended range to attacks, things like that. You know, some robotic yeah. type style. Yeah, it, it felt thematic in that. And I think the humans, basically, what they were good at was kind of leading and inspiring and, and doing different things that they weren't expected to do. I liked that. My poor sniper got destroyed there uh, pretty quickly. <laughs> but uh, each of them have different unique abilities, and I, I did like that. We, we talked about theme a little bit. I think the theme will come through stronger when you play the campaign. Yeah. As we looked through, we have not played through the campaign book. No. But there's a separate campaign book that kind of gives a backstory for the world and the units. And then there are story-centric 
uh, scenarios that go through. And how many of them were there? We were looking. This, this campaign that they gave us is five scenarios. Five long. scenarios. Um, and again, each of these can be played solitaire yep. on either side of the campaign that you want to do. Yep. Um, but that, you know, it's got more of a continuous story. You level your guys as you go. And that that's where the story of it, you get this kind of post-apocalyptic yeah. feel. Yeah, yeah. When you play in a skirmish game... It's more about the tactics. For me, it's a skirmish game, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but like you said, the units kind of bring out some of that flavor and theme yes. by what they can do. Your robots can shoot halfway across the board, pretty much. And they're pretty good weapons. Yeah, yeah. and great defense. Dice. My guys were a little more mobile and could Yeah, they were quite rangy. They'd like move and yeah, attack and run away, away things like that. Which was cool. So I liked that. I also really liked the double-sided uh, tiles. Yes. I thought that was cool. You know, we you can see the map here that we played... This is a three by three grid, and I think there's about so there's twelve tiles. Twelve tiles, and again, this is just like a promo. There like may a, be more a pre prototype. Copy, prototype. That's what it is. So there's there was twelve double sided tiles, right? Which is basically endless iterations of maps. Yeah, um, and some of the scenarios, it was very interesting. They told you to randomly choose the not randomly, kind of go in order and choose one and we were talking you could very easily choose your half of the tiles and use those to your advantage because you choose them and then line them up so it's not like you're just randomly drawing them i also like that because you can kind of create your own terrain that is to your advantage yes but that was the way that scenario not all the scenarios are like that and the cool thing about that is you can create your own scenarios you can kind of easily give yourself 25 army points you can make your own map and then create your units. You can buy, you know, if you wanted three Hellfires, you could spend, you know, 21 points on three veteran Hellfires. You're not going to have much else, but you're going to have three really good units. Um, so I like that that um, malleability and your ability to kind of create something that you want to do. Yes. I think that's, it, it allows for endless variety and endless replayability if yes. you do that over and over again. What I'll do is I'll show you the board and the mechanics and how that plays out, and then we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So here's a look at the board, or at least kind of how we had it set up. Uh, as you can see, it's these big geomorphic tiles. And I'll just pick up this one here. These are all double sided. So on one side you have like a big kind of a crater which is filled with water. That's what this blue line is with a little wave to tell you what that is. And this side you kind of got this orange kind of cracked um, fallen um, power line that also is, it's the orange is difficult to rain, that's what this means. And the rest of this is kind of just, um, it's just kind of flavor, although it does serve a purpose for building the board. But as you can see, the tile is divided up by these little crosses that make it into squares. And that's how your units move. So if you look, each unit is a small kind of square unit. Here we have the scout, human scout. You just move from square to square, expending movement points very simply. If you want to cross difficult terrain, which is the orange, costs two movement points. If you want to go from low to high terrain, getting onto the yellow, also two movement points. But that, that's really about as complex as it goes. So very, very simple movement rules. Um, attacking, you have a weapon range value. If you kind of look down on these cards, these data cards. So you have a movement value of five for the medic, a weapon range of five. And then for CC is close combat, they roll one die. For range combat RC, they roll one die. That's not particularly great. But if you look over here, the Grenadier has two dice for combats. And the really fun stuff is when you start getting into things like the Combine Hellfire Droid. He has a range combat of four, so he's going to roll four dice. And his WR, his weapon range, is a nine. So he's going to basically stomp across the board. Let's see, where's my Hellfire? He's stomping around, and he's got nine range. He's going to blow this guy right off the face of the planet combat you just roll the number of dice equal to their range combat value and you're rolling against the defensive value so the rebel leader here the rebel leader has a defensive value of four and i just roll four dice ten nine 
9, and a 4. You have to exceed that value. So the 4 is a miss. So I do 3 hits. The first hit wounds him. The second hit kills him. Boom. It's really as simple as that. Uh, this is the strongest kind of unit that we played with who rolls 4 dice. Most of them you roll 1 or 2. So it's, you don't have to get too crazy with that. Um, but that, that's, it's really that easy. Uh, moving and shooting, if you shoot through um, difficult terrain, it's obstructed so they get a defensive modifier. Um, you can't shoot through blocking terrain, which is this black terrain. And shooting through walls is impossible unless you're kind of both above the walls. So tactically speaking, rules-wise, this is a very, very simple and approachable game. Not a lot to it, a lot of people could get into this. The really cool part we talked about was this activation cup. And this is how you decide who's going to activate and why. So each of these unit cards for the human player, there's one, two, three, four, five. So for this rebel leader, they have three um, little activation chits. Let me try and dig those out here real quick. There you go. We'll just say it's, well, for the sake of argument, we have three little rebel leader chits. The scout has three, the medic has three, the grenadier has three, and the sniper has three. And again, the combine player, the robot mech player has three for each of theirs. So secretly, before you, you begin a turn, I'm going to choose from my pool one, two, three, four, five, I got five units. Three chits each. I got 15 activation tokens. I'm going to choose five of those to put in the cup. I could put one from each character if I wanted to. So each character can do one thing. Or, if I really want to get my sniper into an advantageous position, I might put two or three of his chits in there, and one from my grenadier and one from my leader. And then my scout and my medic aren't going to do anything this coming turn. So I might build my cup in a way that does that. So I'll put in, uh, and, and, and that's really the crux of this game. So I'm gonna put in a leader, and I'm gonna put in a grenadier, and we'll put in a couple of, let's see, we'll put all of the sniper ones in there, just to make a point. So that's what the human player is gonna put in. And the rest of the ones that he's not putting in, he keeps secret and hidden. And then the combine player is gonna do the same thing. They're going to pick a couple of theirs, Commander of Vanguard and the Inferno. So they're going to put in their ones, and then you just shake this up. I think there's a draw bag in the game that's being released, but we're using a little cup so you can see. And then just, it doesn't matter who picks, you just randomly pick. And whatever you pick, that's what's going to happen. Alright, so we've got the Robot Commander is going to go. So the Robot Commander, wherever he is on the board, I say he's starting back here. He gets to activate. And when you activate, you basically have one action. You either move, or you attack, or you, you know, do a special action that's printed on your unit card. So if this guy is a recruit, he's going to look at this row here. These are his stats, and he has this enhanced range ability. So anyone that he can see that's within weapon range of him, his weapon range is 5, Let's say this guy's right here. He can spend his action to either... Oop, you can't see that. How about that? Here's my little commander. Here's my Inferno robot. He's within weapon range and line of sight, so he can use his ability to give the Inferno robot this plus one weapon range token. That's his activation. So this little chip that we pulled, that's done with. We kind of put that over to the side. Simply use the next chip, and the next chip is the Inferno Droid. So the Inferno Droid looks for enemy targets. I say the Grenadiers right here. I look at my weapon range, which is a 3, and I have a range combat of 3. I do have plus 1 to my weapon range, so normally 1, 2, 3, I can hit that guy. If he was up here, I could shoot him with this bonus that I would then expend. And I simply roll my 3 dice like I did before. And I'm looking to beat his defensive value. Eights and nines are going to hit because the Grenadier has a defensive value of four. So he's going to be wounded and killed off the board. That's a victory point to the robot player. As simple as that. 
So then we're gonna pull our chits, and the next one is our grenadier. Well, he just died, so this is a nothing. And we just move on. And we pull, and the next one is, ah, it's my sniper, who I definitely wanted to do lots of things with, but he. So my sniper, let's say my sniper's over, hmm, my sniper's over here. Well, he's kind of in an awkward spot, because he can't shoot this guy, because this wall is blocking them. So he's gonna move, and the sniper has a movement of four. He's gonna go one, two, three, four. And he's trying to make it so that his line of sight doesn't cross this blocking black terrain, and doesn't cross this, into this yellow terrain either. So he's gonna have to move one more time before he's able to do that. So great, that was his movement. We just have to find another chit, hopefully. And we found a Hellfire Droid. Well, Hellfire Droid's over on this side of the map. He's gonna try and, let's say there's a scavenge token. He's trying to move and pick up a scavenge token, which are these little tokens you put out. We could try and take him out, but for the purposes of this, we're just gonna move him. So he's gonna move, and he's gonna move, and he's gonna move. He's trying to get this token and pick it up because that's worth the victory point. Because in the post-apocalyptic world, weapons are good to have and to hoard. Next activation, we pull the Vanguard. And the Vanguard is this little guy who's, let's say he's up here. This Vanguard has a movement of, let's see, his movement is a four. So he's gonna go one, and then to jump down from this costs two, two, three, four. He's just gonna move there. Great, that's what he does. And another chit, we have the sniper again. Ooh. So the sniper's thinking, ooh, do I attack the Hellfire droid, or do I try and kill this Inferno droid? Well, we're gonna try and kill this guy. So he's gonna step down one, two, three, four. So now, ooh, do we have a firing solution? Yes, we do. We can shoot across here if we needed to. So we're hoping to pull that last chip for him. And we pick, oh, the Harpy. Harpy's over here, he's a little repair droid. He's just gonna move five spaces, one, two, three, four, five, so that he can take care of the Inferno droid when he gets triggered. And we pulled the Rebel Leader. <coughs> Excuse me. The Rebel Leader, he has a special ability called Inspire Move. So he can actually give him a free move, which we're definitely gonna take advantage of. One, two, three. That just helps us get out of the way of this blocking terrain, because this, this uh, difficult terrain means it's harder for us to hit him. And then the last chip, you see it's the last one in the cup, is our sniper's last action. So he's gonna take a shot at the Inferno droid. The sniper has a ranged combat value of a three, so he's gonna roll three dice. The Inferno droid has a defense of six. So we're gonna attack, and we have a 10, an eight, and a seven. That's three hits. So the Inferno droid takes one hit, two hits kills him, and a third hit's wasted. But that's basically a full turn. All of those chits that we pulled and used go into a little exhausted pile, and we cannot use those again for, for the next round. Out of all of the chits I didn't choose from, I'm gonna choose X amount more based on the number of characters I have left in the game who aren't dead. So the um, combine player's got four, and the human player's got like three or four or five. So I choose more to go in there, but the human player used all of their snipers ones. So they're not gonna be able to activate this guy at all. So it's kind of a sitting duck for the rest of the robots to go and take him out without fear of him activating and shooting them. So this is where you start to get into the really nice tactical choice making and the crunchiness of the game is, how much do I risk with this guy? It's more important to put the leaders out so they can give him free activations without using his activation chits. And the droids are tr trying to use their repair droids to repair guys, use their commanders to give them extra range so they don't have to waste time moving, they can just shoot more, things like that. But manipulating those activation chits and also hoping they come out in a favorable order is a big part of this game that makes it very fun and very chaotic as well. 
And chaos is a big fun factor for me in a battle game, especially one that's as light and as simple as this. It gives you something really attractive in a game. So that's kind of a, a, a basic look at this. Again, this is all prototype stuff. So this isn't final components, but as you can see, it's a really nice looking game. And I expect big things from this one. So we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts here. So that was a look at, again, a prototype, prototype version, yeah. right? With it, that being said, and I always say this, when a prototype has components that are at least half decent like this, it's pretty I good. know the final copy is going to be good. Yeah. It's DVG. They usually have a good track record yep. of components at least. Yep. And David's done a good job in all of his games. They all look great. Yeah. Like, they not only play well, they look great. And the, the artwork on these are pretty cool for the little yep. units. Yep. The cards are very clear. The The terrain is very, very clear. Yeah. There is no mistaking what yep. is what. Yellow means elevated. Yes. So this yellow box means you have to spend extra movement to move up on it. Very clear. But, this means you can't shoot through it. Yes. You know. And then, you know, the illustrations on it are cool yeah. and futuristic -y, post yep. apocalypse looking. So yeah, that's lots of nice. trash and debris, and there's some funky nuclear waste over there that, you know, didn't yeah, do any just, damage to you, but it looks awful apocalyptic. Yes. <laughs> uh, the units were cool, right? They're just um, little tiles. What are these? What would you call these? Well, they're basically, I think I'd call them tiles. Yeah. That's not what yeah, they're called, though. They're not counters. No, but maybe you would call counters. But, yeah. you know, they're, it's very simple to know where you are on a board. There's yeah. no stacking or anything crazy like that. So you get it. It's effectively a miniatures game without the miniatures. Right. So you, you can get a ton of units, mm -hmm. but you're not paying a million dollars for it, and you're not right. spending forever pretending like you're going to paint them either. Yeah. So I would say this game... Is going to appeal to people who like strategy and tactics, who don't necessarily want to get bogged down in supply lines and, and difficult terrain. This is fairly straightforward. The rules are fairly clear. And it's really about moving, shooting, getting into position, doing what you need to do. So if you enjoy tactical games, you're going to enjoy this game. If you like really deep tactical games, this probably isn't for you. This is... I would say more of an entry level. Yeah, this doesn't skirmish have, tactic. This doesn't game. have a lot of crunch to no. it. It's got a lot of let's get right into it and play yep. it, and let's get it played, and then let's play it again. Yep. The games are very quick. The pace of the games are very quick. Pull a few chips. Pull a few chips. Pull a few chips. All right, let's get yep. to the next round. Go go yep. go go go. Your units aren't necessarily the most durable. R right, and and you know you're rolling Especially ten siders. Yeah, you're rolling ten siders. And more than not, more often than not, the humans' defense is a level of four. So on a ten sider, sixty percent of the time, generally the the, the combine is going to be hitting them. Generally, yeah. Um, so it's you were rolling what three and four dice most of the time. I was rolling two dice. So there there's some uh, differences there between the the factions. They're asymmetrical. They have different skills and abilities. But yeah, it's not a really deep crunchy tactical game but it does have some very cool and innovative elements like the chit draw like some of the abilities like the leveling and the army creation with the skirmish points yes. i really think it's it's got some cool elements yeah it doesn't get bogged down in itself no. I, and that's what i enjoyed it was refreshing to have a tactical game that didn't have a tone for the rules right so many of them were like in this situation with this and this do this do oh, this like, yeah it was just like Move yeah. and shoot, man. Move and shoot. Yep. Right? Well, and anytime I hear skirmish, that's exactly what it is. It's move, shoot. Use terrain, shoot. And, and that's what you do. And this is what this ended up being. The nice thing with this is also that I think pretty much anyone could play it. Oh, I, I think... You, you could play this with pretty young kids. Probably six to eight years old if they have played games before. Yeah. I think definitely by ten, they're they're going to get it very quickly and understand the concepts yeah move, so that's move, great count a couple squares oh yep. i can get you roll the dice right that's i mean that's really it yep the most complex part of it is again that activation system yeah of, uh, pulling you know, the optimizing the how i build my curve each turn. yeah and, and that's probably the difference that's going to someone who's played this multiple times is going to understand their faction better mm -hmm. than someone who does not they'll then build that cup more efficiently and probably dominate um 
So that, but yeah, definitely this could be for kids. It's easy to learn. It's pretty. It's attractive. Very well done. The art's great. Um, and fun to play. I had a good time. Yes. There's, we, so again, we played with the humans and the combine. There's four other factions. And they're listed in the rule book. Yes. I don't um, know how are they going to organize that if they have stretch goals or expansions right. or whatever, but I want to see what those guys are like and how they're yeah. different from these ones. Yep. Because it was, these were fun, and I'm like, I just want to see what more, yeah. you know, what different factions Different do abilities, them. different... Because they kind of give some flavor, you know, there's like a mm -hmm. race of like scions, yep. psychic abilities, there's like... So they've got a good... Some like mutants, Yeah, like that. there's going to be some neat stuff there's there. Like a secret... Uh, like yeah. a secret cabal who knows I, I always like any game where you can you know during the campaign you can level your guys up I love that I love the ability to build and, and improve Dan Versen Games does a lot of those types of games mm -hmm. you know Sherman Leader Phantom Leader those guys can get better better skills um, so I like those kind of games and I like games where you've got to and there's some chaos here. You're not always going to know what happens. And, no. and we kind of laugh sometimes. Hey, you're only going to hit me on a seven and you roll three sevens. And that's, <laughs> that's just the way it is. So it's you've got to take this game in that, in that vein. It's a fun, playable, quick skirmish game. Yes. Don't worry about getting over bogged down in rules and deep ta tactic and strategy. You're, you're going to need some of that, but it's going to be fun. Yeah, when we played Combat Commander, mm -hmm. which is one of our favorite tactical games, I'm like pulling my hair out because I'm so stressed. Cause yeah. I <laughs> super want to win that I don't game. have the card yet. I can't bear to lose that game. This game is it's so quick. If you I'm lose, like, boom, boom, boom. All yeah. right, if we lose, I'm, Set like, it up. I'm like, dang it, let's play again. Yeah, let's play again. It's, yep. it's, it, I haven't invested three hours into like, ah! Yeah. So yeah. that's what I, I think that's a really big positive for this. Yeah. For me, at least. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we played another skirmish tactics game last year, Wildlands, mm -hmm. from Osprey. I, I wouldn't say these compare that well. They're the same concept. Those used cards to drive your actions. These use the chit pull. I like this chit pull concept better. Yeah. It felt less random. It felt more... Uh, determined or focused on what I wanted to do. I felt like with that other game, it was like the card draw randomness kind of made it, it was, what it was. Yeah, so those, and those were like, they're two, they are quite different, but they're, they're the same kind of a light skirmish game, you would yeah. say. And I like, that one also only had like two boards. Yeah. This has got a lot more, a lot more. replayability Variability. Yep. in, frankly, the same size. Yep. And I think that's a credit to this, too. So yeah. this has been, for what remains... Skirmish tacti Tactics Apocalypse. Say that ten times quick. That's not going to happen. No, it's not. <laughs> so designed by David Thompson. He's done some really good games recently. The Pavlov's House. Which, which I loved. It was, I think, number five or six on my 2018 and Top 10 got, list. He's doing Castle Itter yep. coming out later Coming out later well. this year. So he's building himself a reputation for some really yep. good games. Yep. This is just the next in the line of games that they're yep. putting out. So appreciate you guys tuning in. If you want to do the Kickstarter, you're probably on that page looking at it right yep. now. If not, uh, it's probably available to retail. Ah, no. yep. So uh, check it out. Um, this is a really fun, light little game. Uh, nothing too crazy. You're not going to melt your mind with this one, but it's just a fun, playable yep. skirmish game. Yeah. Have fun with it. Yes. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. I've been Alexander. And I'm Grant.